The Lord be with you. Please be seated. Our service this morning is a service of morning prayer and can be found on page 85 in the Book of Common Prayer. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws which he set before us. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice onto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me. Almighty and most merciful Father, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which you ought to have done, and we have done those things which you ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and infinitely believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The New Testament lesson is from... St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, beginning at the 17th verse. <coughs> Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. 
Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the word of the Lord. We stand and sing him 550 years, Jesus, Mother of the High Church. Let us pray. Loving Lord, as we continue our journey uh, through the Sermon on the Mount, uh, we pray that by your Spirit uh, you would grant us uh, wisdom and understanding so that we would know and perceive thy plans and purposes. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we are just under three months away from the coronation of Charles III in Westminster Abbey. And as a local community, we will have to uh, think about how we mark and celebrate uh, that occasion. And so please do get your thinking caps on and don't be afraid to suggest 
ideas. There will be much uh, talk in the media uh, leading up to the coronation. And two words which will feature will be change and continuity. Uh, How will uh, the new king uh, put his own stamp on uh, the coronation ceremony? And how it will uh, be a continuation on uh, from the very proud tradition uh, going back over a thousand years of, uh, the, of kings and queens being anointed uh, and proclaimed as the monarch. And those uh, two questions of change and continuity uh, really uh, run through life. Uh, there are two things that we have to grapple with ourselves How, in one sense, do we uh, continue on uh, the good things in life? But then how do we uh, change or transform ourselves uh, so that we progress on into the future? In the the life and times of Jesus Christ, uh, these two things, change and continuity, uh, loomed large. And sometimes he was accused of uh, breaking with the past. Uh, of not fulfilling what had been before, of moving away from the very proud tradition uh, of the law and uh, the prophets. And so we have Jesus here answering uh, that charge in the Sermon on the Mount. In verse 17 he says, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish uh, but to fulfil And that idea of fulfilment uh, runs uh, very strongly uh, throughout Matthew's Gospel. Uh, Right from uh, the opening of Matthew's Gospel, uh, we have the genealogy of Jesus taking us through uh, wonderful episodes in the life and times of the people of the Old Testament. Uh, Great episodes like um, from Abraham uh, to the kings, uh, from the kings uh, to the exile and to the prophets. And so Jesus is saying that he is coming not to make a break with all of that and not to abolish it, but to fulfil it. And so fulfilment is a large part of the ministry of Jesus. He says, For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. (coughs) And so Jesus has respect for the law, Uh, he lives a life of obedience to the law, and he upholds uh, the law as found in the law and in the prophets. And so there's this uh, continuation on uh, from the old uh, to the new. And that's why as Christians we should have um, a healthy respect Uh, for Judaism, uh, for uh, the roots of our Christian faith, because they go back into the Old Testament, to the Hebrew Scriptures, uh, to the Law and the Prophets. And that's why we uh, teach our children in Sunday school uh, and in crew uh, the Old Testament stories of Abraham, of David, of Solomon, uh, of of, uh, the great episodes that took place in that period in the plans and purposes of God. Uh, Jesus uh, comes not to abolish, uh, but to fulfil. And he wants his disciples really to grasp hold of this. In verse 19 he says, Therefore whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever uh, does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Of heaven. And this is something which he reinforces uh, throughout Matthew's Gospel. Uh, in Matthew 13, verses 51 to 52, he says that a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a household who brings out of his storeroom uh, treasures old and new. Uh, treasures old and new. And so he's encouraging his disciples in their teaching and in their ministry uh, to draw from the wisdom and the literature uh, of the old, uh, but also to embrace uh, the new, the teaching of Jesus that they are receiving um, in uh, the present. And so we have continuity, but we also have 
change or transformation. And throughout Matthew's gospel, if it was um, a a pantomime, you see a Jesus sparring and poking fun at the Pharisees the whole way through uh, the play. And at various points, um, he exposes their hypocrisy uh, because the Pharisees outwardly look as if they are uh, keeping the law, uh, but inwardly um, they uh, have uh, different thoughts and feelings Uh, which run contrary to the law. And so that's why in verse 20 he says, For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Now what does he mean by that? Well, if you take the verse out of context and you just take it as a verse, uh, to exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, Uh, You may think to yourself that they are very righteous and very acceptable and therefore you've got to go above and beyond that. Uh, It would be easy to come to that uh, reading of the verse in isolation. But if you read on in the Sermon of the Mount, uh, you will see that Jesus is exposing uh, the hypocrisy uh, of the Pharisees in various issues in anger, um, in in the area of lust, in the area of divorce, in the area of retaliation. He's really saying that outwardly it looks like they are keeping the law, and yes, they are obedient to the law, uh, but inwardly uh, they are actually waging, uh, are are raging against it. Uh, Their heart uh, is is saying a very different story uh, to their outward uh, practice. And so he's saying to his followers that you must not be like uh, the Pharisees, uh, that you uh, must come from a good place within in order to be uh, living a life uh, that is righteous. But at this point in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, you would be mistaken for thinking uh, that Jesus is calling us to a works type of righteousness, and you would miss the real heart of the gospel that is, uh, is really presented to us by Peter and Paul. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, uh, St. Peter writes this, uh, For Christ suffered once for sins, uh, the righteous for the unrighteous, uh, to bring us uh, to God. In other words, it's not a matter uh, of um, trying to obtain our own salvation, but it is, it's accepting the salvation uh, that Jesus provides uh, for us. He dies the righteous uh, for the unrighteous in order that we might have a relationship with God. And St. Paul, he uh, picks this up and explains it in this way in Romans chapter 1, verses 16 to 17. He says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation. To everyone who believes, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Now, that last part that St. Paul quotes there is actually from the Old Testament. It's from Habakkuk. The, the righteous or the justice shall live by faith. And so The invitation to us as followers of Jesus is to live our lives uh, by faith, uh, to follow him, uh, to learn from him in life, and to accept his gracious gift of forgiveness, mercy, and a fresh start, to lay hold of all of those things uh, by faith. Uh, Charles Wesley, in that hymn that we sang there, uh, Jesus, Lover of My Soul, um, he acknowledges this, in uh, the third uh, verse. Uh, Thou, O Christ, art all I want, more than all in thee I find. Raise the fallen, cheer the faint, heal the sick, and lead the blind. Just and holy is thy name. I am all unrighteousness, false and full of sin am I. Thou art full of truth and grace. And the great uh, Charles Wesley, um, he, out of anyone in church history, could uh, boast in terms of his ministry, particularly in his hymn writing, and yet he acknowledges 
that it's nothing in his hand he brings, but simply to the cross he clings. He looks to Christ for forgiveness. He looks to Christ for mercy. He looks to Christ for a fresh start in life. Let us pray. Our gracious, loving, heavenly Father, we thank you for the teaching of your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you that he cuts through most of the superficial things in life and leads us to the root of our problem, the matter of the heart. We pray, Father, that you would fill our hearts with your love, your joy and your peace. Help us to be aware of our shortcomings and failings, and yet help us to be quick to accept his forgiveness, his mercy, and his fresh start in life. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We stand and sing hymn number 10, All My Hope on God is Founded. <coughs> Loving Lord, sometimes our lives are so full of worries that we forget how you look after us through every aspect of our lives. When our worries begin to spiral out of control, help us to turn them into a conversation with you. 
confident that you will calm our anxiety and give us hope for the future. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we pray for your church and the churches in our local community, asking that we would continue to build the kingdom of God among men, women and children in this place. Help us to grow in our knowledge and understanding of your ways and help us to reflect your love as we reach out in compassion and care for those who live in this area. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, we pray for all who bear the burdens of pain, bereavement, worry and depression. We pray for those whose illness stems from anxiety. We pray that they may have an awareness of your presence and an understanding that you are bearing those burdens with them and always working towards healing and wholeness. We pray for those among our friends and families who are experiencing difficulties at this time, and we name them in the quietness of our hearts. Merciful God, through your love and mercy, you turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new life. Comfort those who grieve, having lost loved ones, especially the people of Turkey and Syria, affected by the earthquake. Surround them with your arms of love and carry them through the darkness by the light of your love. Lord, in your mercy, Everlasting God, we ask you to lead us in this coming week. Help us to remember that you're always with us. In the silence of this place, we bring our own prayers and petitions for the week that lies ahead. Lord, in your mercy. <coughs> Merciful Father, accept these, our prayers, for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and all whom you love, this day and forevermore. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.